Hi, my name is Colin. I'm an instructor and today I wanted to talk to you about preparing your car for the racetrack. Now, the first thing that you should do and the first thing that I see everyone not do when they come to the track is clean out their car. Again, these things seem real obvious, but when people come to the track, they have junk all over their car when they come in for prep. They have dice hanging from the rear view mirror. They have even just little pieces like this of paper in the car to track speed with the windows open, which you have to do when you're on the track. Things like this will fly in front of your face. They'll distract you when you're coming around a corner. So go through and clean out absolutely everything. Clean out the ashtray, clean out the glove compartment, clean out absolutely everything out of the inside of the car. And also make sure that some cars will have a uh, floor mats that are snapped in or locked down like the Audis here do but a lot of them don't, so make sure you pull those out because if you're not careful, your feet will slide around a lot during the race and they'll push the uh, floor mats up underneath the brake pedal and then when you try and hit the brake pedal, it'll actually be um, uh, obstructed by the uh, floor mat itself. So really try and get those out of the car and especially the back, under the seats, really do a thorough job cleaning out your car and also the trunk. A lot of people will come back from one session out saying that something's bumping around and they'll find their kids' toys in the trunk, they'll find other little bits and pieces. So really make sure to clean all that out before you head out there. So continuing on, when we look at the tires, we really have to figure out a few things. You have to look at the tread depth and make sure that there's some sufficient tread on here. Now a lot of street tires will chunk off when you're on the racetrack, so you really want to try and put some uh, race tires on the car if you can. Otherwise, uh, try and put as high performance as you can standard dot tires on the vehicle, even if you're just going out for a day. Uh, the other thing you really want to check for is your lug nuts. People never check this on the street and it's one of the things that can cause you to have a major accident if you're not careful. So really just go in there, read the owner's manual and make sure that the lug nuts are tight and there's usually a tool for it in the trunk. The next thing you want to do, and they'll do this during tech when you bring your car out there, is check for the bearings to make sure that they're not loose. Now you want to put your foot at the, about the top of the tire here and give it a good push. And this will uh, be very, very rare to have happen, but you hear a thunk, thunk when you move that back and forth. And that's actually the wheel bearings being loose. And that you should have uh, taken into a mechanic and checked out or uh, deal with it yourself if you're so able. So uh, that's the tire section. So now for the engine. When you get your car teched, when you bring it out to the track, they're going to be looking for a few things. The first thing that they're going to be looking for are any obvious leaks in the engine compartment. Now, this isn't the cleanest engine, and we don't expect yours to be either, but definitely check to make sure that there isn't a whole lot of oil leaking, that you don't have any leaks out of the radiator, that everything is just kind of nice and battened down. On a lot of newer cars, they will have uh, covers pretty much covering everything, and they don't expect you to take those off, but they do expect to check around the sides and make sure that there's nothing out. Also, in the battery, do make sure, again, this is something that people really never need to check on the road, but do make sure that everything is nice and locked down. If you have a car uh, where the battery is in a different position than it originally was, make sure that it's not just uh, held in by a bungee cord. Really make sure that it has a nice lockdown on it, something locking it down over it. So next is under the car. And again, this seems ridiculous, but really, get down underneath your car and check it out. A lot of cars like this newer Audi will have a big plate underneath the uh, bottom of it, so you won't really be able to see if there's any oil leaks, etc. But again, it's a good thing to check. If there is a big enough leak, it will have leaked past the bottom. And again, this is something that they're going to be doing when they check out your car. So really just kind of jump down here, give it a good glance, see if anything's hanging from the bottom of the car. It's something that'll really save you a lot of time uh, once you already get out to the track. You really want to check out your brake lights. Again, this seems silly, but have someone stand on the brakes or put a brick over it or something so that you can really check your brake lights. Most new cars will tell you that the brake lights are having some issues, but again, this is one of those things where I've seen people come all the way out to the track, they get there in the morning, one of their brake lights doesn't work, and then they won't be let out onto the track. So also, like I said before, always check your trunk, because even though you don't think anything's back there, you will always be surprised. The last thing I want to talk to you about today is helmets. Now, I know a lot of you will bring your motorcycle helmets out to the track, and some groups may or may not actually let you out on the track with that on. This is really not a safe idea. Motorcycle helmets are set up for different types of impacts than auto helmets are, and they're not fireproof. I know the motorcycle helmets may look a lot cooler, they may have big dragon flames on the side. Neither of these things are going to help you in an impact. So really, go out, spend a few hundred dollars on an actual Snell-approved auto helmet. Now, the rating on the inside will be listed somewhere up in the headband here, and I won't tell you the exact year that you need because, of course, you could be watching this in the future and it'll be a different year. So check with the group that you're racing with and really find a helmet that is appropriate for the type of racing that you're doing. It'll save you a lot of money in the long run.